So joining us for this one, the Athletics Aston Villa writer Greg Evans, Madrid-based Dermot Corrigan, who interviewed Emery for the Athletic last year, and Art Roche, who covers Arsenal, one of Emery's former clubs. First things first, Greg, is, it, is this the first time you've been on a podcast uh, with with positive Villa stuff to talk about? I thought you was going to say from a hotel room there, Mark, for no. starters. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of feels that way, yeah. I mean, I've been I've been covering this club for <clears throat> over a decade now, and this is definitely the most enjoyable part that uh, that I've ever experienced. Um, they obviously Villa had a great run that when they got promoted from the from the Championship. That was fun to cover as well. But look, they they're they're on a new level now, um, and I think. What's more interesting is that the rest of the Premier League are actually getting excited about this club now. So to answer your question, yeah. Okay, so let's and everybody has to be honest here, right? Let's go let's go back to when we heard the news that he was being appointed and what your initial thoughts were. Dermot, go first. A that I wasn't surprised that he was going to the Premier League, but I was surprised he was going to a team who at that stage were fighting against relegation and looked like it was a trouble, like didn't didn't seem to have a very well balanced squad or I don't watch all the Villa games, but they seem to be struggling under Gerard. So from speaking to Emery last year and just general knowing some of the people around him, he was always interested in going back to England, but I wasn't sure that Villa was the, the best club for him to go back to, which looks like I've been I was wrong about that. Greg, what did you think? I couldn't believe that Villa could attract a, a manager of that calibre at that point, to be honest. I thought, wow, this is a, a you know, huge upgrade, a manager who is coming in and you, you haven't really got to worry about him because you know that he's going to get results. So it was a bit of a surprise for me. And Art? <laughs> I had a bit of intrigue, I guess you'd call it, because, uh, yeah, when you look at the, the teams he's managed before, they're all European heavy hitters, really. Uh, Arsenal, Sevilla, Valencia and Paris Saint-Germain. So I think you're, you've probably seen... His uh, aim, obviously, is to get into Europe again uh, with Villa. But at the time of the appointment, yeah, I was more intrigued than anything because, uh, as the other guys mentioned, I was a bit, um, I wasn't expecting it. How um, how much do you think we view him, first of all, uh, by what happened at Arsenal? Because we can, we can be incredibly insular, can't we, as a football <laughs> community? So, oh, I didn't go well at Arsenal. Why Why would you go for him? I think a lot of maybe social media probably still view him that way, um, just because of how almost dominant he, he became as a personality on there. Um, but when you look at, I guess, his time since then, and I know Dermot will have a lot more to go at with this, but um, just when you look at Villarreal against Arsenal in the Europa League, he's already kind of proven... He's past that time in his career now. Uh, he was able to get past both Arsenal and Manchester United to win the Europa League um, with Villarreal. And I think as as a coach, he was always very well respected, especially as a person as well. I'd say that because whenever you were around him, you got a sense of someone who was not just polite for the sake of being polite, but um, someone who actually wanted to build a bit of a connection. So... Um, yeah, it's nice to see that nice things are finally happening for him in England. He he will come on to why he starts so well and why he started well at clubs in Spain before. But why he start? I wonder whether one of the reasons why he started well at Villa and you mentioned that first answer in any interview or press conference is aimed at the fans is the connection he has got with the Villa fans already. I mean, I've got a couple of mates who are Villa fans. They keep sending me screen grabs of Emery's Instagram or Villa's Instagram, you know, and Emery stood in the dark at Villa Park with the ground lit by floodlights <laughs> and it, you know, like being something from Wuthering Heights that's so romantic <laughs> about it. Um, it. He has, whether that's him, whether that's, whether it's his people, he has created and developed this connection already. Yes. He, he's, he's done all of that. And, 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 the hardest thing to do in football is then go and get results. But he's done that from the very start as well. And I think that he won Villa supporters and the players over in the very first game because he came in and he'd studied in his Spanish bunker for a couple of weeks, looking through all the strengths and weaknesses of the players. He knew a lot about the players when 
he arrived um, and he had a specific game plan for the for the Man United game, which was his first game in charge. And Villa were brilliant that day. If you if you remember, it was Cristiano Ronaldo's last ever Premier League game, I think. Um, and, uh, and and Villa just picked Man United apart and, and eventually won the game too. What? And I think that just that gained some buy-in from the players. Uh, and then supporters obviously enjoyed that. Villa went to Brighton and won the next week. Um, and then what was really crucial, which I think gets overlooked, is the fact that he had the World Cup break to just spend some more time with the players, show them exactly what he wanted them to do, spend more time with individuals and, and explain how they were, how they should be working in his system. Um, and then when the when the World Cup obviously finished and, and Villa came back, results picked up then. And yeah, just just on the supporters, they've they've bought into his methods straight away. And I think the respect side that he's shown to them has really helped. Why, why does he? What, what does history tell us about why he starts well, Dermot? Um, well, he's he's super. We are well, he, when a new manager comes into a situation. I think Phil is a good example of it, where there are some players who are maybe frustrated with their own performances or frustrated with how, how the team is doing, and he is such a meticulous planner and he's such a good communicator as well that he sits down with the players and he can give them a plan of what he wants them to do and what he wants the team to do. And when it um when it comes off, as Greg is saying there, you know, if you win your first couple of games or if things players can see immediately that if they do what what he's telling them to do, that it's going to work out well for them and it's going to work out for the team, it can just kind of take off. Um you build like quite quickly, as Greg is saying there, you build like a, a connection with the players and a trust there, and it tends to to go on and on and on. The the problem maybe is that like over time players don't like to be so micromanaged and maybe it, it you know, it, it can work great for, for 18 months or whatever. So something, and then after that time, maybe players think, well, maybe, you know, it's not all down to Emery. It's actually, you know, cause I'm great. And now I have my own ideas about what I'm going to do. That might be even better. Um, one thing at very real as well, that he, when he wasn't playing European games, um, it was he had more time to to work on those plans to work on the training ground and as Greg said about the World Cup you know makes total sen- sense to me when the games are coming thick and fast and when he had games he it wasn't so easy for for Villarreal to balance the two competitions like they they could they were quite inconsistent in La Liga um, but then we're going and beating Man United in or well doing very well against Man United or getting through the group with Man United and then beating uh, Juventus and Bayern in the Champions League so there's a yeah, it's the that initial kind of burst of of wow, this guy really knows what what he's doing and it's really working out. Can be yeah, can kind of propel teams in his first first while. Yeah, just sorry. Do you think one of his skills then, Dermot? And we can all come in on this, but Dermot, for, do you think one of his skills is actually in the main picking the right club for his skill set? In the sense of go to Villarreal, go to Sevilla, Valencia. Aston Villa as well, you've probably got players desperate to be improved, desperate to be taken to the next level. And a manager who will go, if you do what I say, we will have every chance of going to the next level. And maybe where it hasn't worked out, he's been at clubs where players have gone, well, we know everything. We've been successful relatively. Um, you know, why, why do we need to stay in, ho- in a hotel the night before a home match, for example. Yeah, I, like I, I'd agree exactly with that. I'm not sure if it's his skill in that he's he's found the right clubs or if it's that's the opportunities that, that have come up for him because he like he jumped at Paris Saint-Germain, as most managers would do, and he, he was super excited about going to Arsenal and he thought Arsenal w- was going to work out for him. And maybe he still feels very strongly, and other people who were at Arsenal at that time as well, who I've spoken to, that they were heading in the right direction, that it was more... It was a, so much work to do there to come in and and change the the way of working at the club like after the, after Wenger and you know been there for for two decades or whatever and the the dressing room had to be changed everything around the the training methods the atmosphere the mindset all of that work had to be done and you know re- following Wenger was a was a tough job for anybody to 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 have done so I'm not sure if he chose the right time to go to Arsenal if you know what I mean that maybe if he'd come in or if somebody else had come in done the work that he started to do and then he could come in afterwards would have been even better timing but but generally the point is is definitely true that, that there's a type of club that suits um Unai Emery specifically re- really really well and it is with players who who maybe younger players or players who have feel they have something to prove players who feel they could be doing better than, than they're doing at the moment 
and who see an opportunity to win, whether it's a Europa League at, well, Sevilla three times. And it was often different players, you know, because Sevilla would would sell on the players who had who had won the Europa League and then you guys would come in. You know, Manchi, the sporting director there, would, you know, when it when it has played off for him, he's picked up some gems, kind of guys who've been struggling elsewhere or younger players with with potential. And Emery is the perfect manager for those guys. Um, and maybe Villa is the, the right or the, a similar situation as well. Yeah, I think it's a really good point from Dermot in terms of the young players, because if you look at Emery's time at Arsenal, he was the guy who gave debuts to Emil Smith-Rowe, uh, Bukayo Saka, um, also Gabriel Martinelli as well. But the one that uh, I kind of mentioned to Greg the other week was Alex Awobi, um, who still kind of remembers him really well, even though they only spent one season together. Um, and yeah, it's just really interesting because you have these little kind of chapters that happen in seasons. And obviously the biggest one people will remember with Emery is the whole Ozil kind of situation, how that started with him being brought off early at Stamford Bridge in the second game of that season. And then almost being just on the sidelines for a few months. But um, I think, yeah, when you're at a club like Arsenal and your, I guess, um, approach shifts the dynamics so quickly, um, it can maybe be a little bit jarring um, or a bit of a shock to the system uh, at first. Whereas we see Mikel Arteta, he's, I wouldn't say he's too dissimilar from Emery in terms of how meticulous he is. But no, that, has, that's the thing, Art, yeah. isn't it? This, this current Arsenal, yeah. this current Arsenal squad would be would be brilliant for Emery because because they are all they are all um want you, you can t- you can hear it when Arteta talks about mm. them about they want to improve they are part of this process they have been learning you know one of his former captains at Villarreal Costa said you know he, he always said that the important thing was to enjoy the process and the journey. And actually, this current Arsenal squad are very much enjoying the process and the journey. It's just they needed a spell between Wenger and somebody to to get the whole Wenger way of doing things out of their system, maybe. Yeah, a little buffer, I guess. Yeah, Um, buffer, yeah. Yeah, so I think the main, I guess, difference where I've seen is just in terms of football, there's been a clearer plan. Um, So that's probably why it kind of wobbled a bit for Emery at the end as well. But um, yeah, in terms of just uh, his skill set and why um, people at Arsenal were thinking it was going in the right direction, I think there are clear signs why um, that would be the case. Who I thought was really interesting after the win over Newcastle, Greg, was, and and it goes back to this thing about process and and coaching and improvement, was Ollie Watkins' post-match interview with, with match of the day on just exactly what Emery has done with him to improve him, where where, where to stand, yeah. how not to engage with centre halves, to maybe not run the channels but to be on the shoulder, to give instructions to the rest of the team to look for Ollie where wherever he is. I mean it was a real insight into the the personal touch actually of Emery. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like we we could do a whole podcast on Ollie Watkins because he his season has been. Well, we'll do that next so... week, Greg. Next week, <laughs> that'd All be right. fun. Blimey. Please have me on again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, look, I, I'll go back to the the World Cup break where Ollie Watkins missed out on the England team, and he was in Dubai with with Villa on the on the mid season break and I sat down with him I spent some quality time with him you know it wasn't just like a a quick q and a interview you know I sat down had breakfast with him and and found out a little bit more about him and he was in a difficult place at that point because he'd scored two goals in 14 games for Villa in the opening half of the season he was really disappointed that he missed out on the world cup because you know he'd had that taste of of being in the England squad so I asked him what have you got to do and he said well this manager has been working with me a lot differently to to other managers he said to me stop making those um, unselfish runs in the channel stay in the width of the box and we'll make sure that our players provide you with the service. You just listen to what I'm doing and you'll get the service. And that's worked really well since. Um, and, and he also showed him lots of clips of Carlos Baca, of Patrick um, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and uh, Cavani at PSG. 
those were three strikers that Emery had worked with previously and had um, and said that they had uh, fitted into his system really well. So he said, if you look at what they are doing, that's the sort of blueprint for how I want my striker to work. And he scored 11 goals in the last 12 games. <laughs> so he's working. <laughs> 